Now you can see how much taller those monorail columns look because half of it is underwater. And we put rockwork in the base where the water is on, so you only see like half of the, the length of that. But we sure got into it when we went in there for finding Nemo. We had to uncover all of that portion of the, the, the height of those things. And they're, they're truly like 30 feet tall. And the longest ones are up over the waterfalls because they go down through the caverns and then down below the ground underneath that. And they're about 45 feet tall. So now there's some interesting shots here. Uh, once we get into the something, you know, got his cue to go up the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they didn't use the shots. And See, look, the top looks finished and which isn't. Yeah, it's not amazing. They went through all the steps. Now, in this shot, you can see the turbine is, is, is looking at us in the back behind the guy with a steam hat. And that's John Hitch. I believe we're going on the something right one of the first times, at least for the buy on this. I think there's going to be a handrail there. And you notice the boat doesn't have a, a label on it, so it, it hasn't been really put to the name yet. The change in design from Point House and Leaks Under the Sea to the Atomic Submarines uh, by General Dynamics was now, there's a wave machine. There's a lot of different stories about wave machines, but uh, they never work. Is the one at this gate still working? I'm not sure. <laughs> no? Yes? Again, yeah, safety first, folks. <laughs> Where those guys are walking around, that's where you came out of the top of the lift and you look out over all of Disneyland. It was pointed at the hub, and you got this two second vista. Once you knew it, you could get your camera ready because the ride wasn't going fast yet and did a perfect job. And here we are at the loading building. You know, Walt built there, did a film. Another scene. Do not do this at home. He got off the little cable car there. So now we're at Open Gate 1959. This truly was like a relaunch of Disneyland, four years in it. And literally every one of these rides was a groundbreaker. Like the first daily operating monorail in the United States, the Matterhorn, which was the first tubular steel coaster, and the submarine ride that to this day is probably the only uh, ride of its kind still operating in the, in the Western Hemisphere. You'd have to go to Hawaii to ride on the submarine. And of course, the famous shot. <laughs> I know they keep using them over and over again. And you know, the Nixon Library, this is the number one selling photograph over there the Nixon Library. Number two is Elvis in the White House. Uh, anyway, so they finally got yeah, through the number of And Bob had us a great story about, and now I don't know again the Admiral's wife there, but she had some cranky kids and cut some footage of them just reading it, uh, causing us storm there and he was working. But Bob took the president and vice president out on the track. He <laughs> <laughs> service kind of left behind the station and uh, suddenly he realized if it stopped out there at the high point, there would be no way to get there. So here comes the boat back from the first truck on the track. I think I saw that in black and white on TV. Now this is Brother Man, we heard about the mermaids, and yes indeed, there were mermaids. And uh, they performed every day up through the early 60s. And, uh, you know, there's lots of rumors about why they're not there. The chlorine was really intense in here, and we heard that it really turned your hair to straw. And uh, the other story, of course, was that guys would dare one another to jump in and, and swim out. But here is the contest at the hotel. So you're looking at vintage Disneyland Hotel. And this is the mermaid contest, and I understand the supervisors in the park drew straws to get to go over it. <laughs> and they all showed up. Yeah, everybody showed up. <laughs> How many supervisors were there? It's my day off, so I'll, I'll come in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're all in suits looking at their Yeah, they're not. They can't bear to look. So, first, they had to prove they could swim. And they had to get into the outfit, and it was form fitting. So, you know, that guy was more than me. That was John Dunham. Look, John Dunham, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Four hands. It's fun when you see them get down in there. It almost seems like instantly 
It must be easier to swim with that tail because that's why fish are made that way, I guess. But watch how good she is with it immediately. You know, it works better than feet. What are those things, feet? <laughs> I think this is our last shot on the original stuff. So we're now I'm going to switch it over. And this is where Josh lost two episodes. We're going to move into the 60s now. So you're going to see things that start at the Sunday of 1960 and go up to the opening of New Orleans at the Brown Room. Yeah. Yeah. 67, right in that era. So, are you ready? I can only talk four minutes, too, without anything running. So, <laughs> let's go. All right, so we're at Carnation Plaza, my alma mater, my first two years at Disney. And that is Betty Taylor performing an Easter Sunday show. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without her partner, Wally Bo. And for those of you who are lucky enough to be in the sources, there's one. Well, wasn't that an incredible night over there? <laughs> He was doing his balloons. And everyone's dressed for Easter Sunday. If you look at the crowd up in front with their bonnets and I don't know, it was Disneyland. Boy, did Disneyland was a real special thing in those days. If you did dress up just normally, uh, as you look at the crowds and see that, it was a big deal. Uh, you know, we didn't have annual passes, so mom and dad saved up a year. Now, this is really fun. Uh, this is the paper boys, and they had a contest where on a fun sausage we had to put the paper in the right place. Uh, but this was kind of a doll. Yeah, so that, that's not so fun there. So they're all just fighting to get the, the paper in the box. So now check out. Uh, <laughs> You're gonna hit the target. Or <laughs> So 
we're going to move now to another part of the world, actually, going east. Uh, here, New York. And the opening of Small World at the New York World's Tower of the World in the in April. Somebody tell me the date. Is it the 12th or something like that? Now, watch those balloons. I didn't get the idea for the thing that from these balloons, but uh, is that amazing? Maybe that's a moment. There's a little bit in the sky. <laughs> right there. <laughs> and next, we have a uh, wall actually uh, opening a small wall garage, which I don't think I've seen this furniture before. And we found this just about two months ago, I think, Jim. They are crazy about this thing. Yeah, pretty cool. Kevin the River. He doctor can do iTunes DJ and pick up all the right Disney cuts for all of this stuff using me. Okay, this was funny. I'll talk about this a little bit. This was uh, footage on the sound stage at the studio before Lincoln was all done in Disney. But we use this in previous Lincoln presentations, and it's just amazing to see uh, this figure so early on. The stand was amazing. Like, we don't run through the whole show here. But Josh, uh, you, you synchronized it. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, we didn't have the audio, so he was able to take the original tracks. On the word mirror. Synchronize it up there. But the mirror was there so they could see how he was looking from every scene in the, the theater. What you want? What's amazing is when he sits down, and he puts attention to, to his hands and the way he and the animation is unbelievable. Yeah, and uh, you might wonder why didn't we do that? Well, in about a week at the World's Fair, his hands were as pizza, and he had two big torn holes, or thread hair. Yeah, because it looks so great. So unfortunately, when you work from 8 in the morning till midnight, during the same thing all day, 